Hello everyone, this is Jim James, author of the book Automatic Poker. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on using Cardrunner's EV. It's a free program you can download and just Google search it. Um, you, it is limited in its functionality. If you want to open up um, all of its features, you'll need to buy it. I think it's $99. But just the free version will allow you to do some pretty cool calculations um, which will really help you work on your game. Today I'm going to cover 3-betting. Um, more specifically, 3-bet shoving for a short stack. Um, all examples will be for 50 and L with a 30 big blind stack. And I'll just show you how you can use this program to set up various scenarios so you can get an idea of what, shove, what shoves are profitable and you can also I'm also going to turn it around and, and show you um, what it looks like if somebody's actually 3-betting you and what kind of ranges you can 4-bet with or call a shove with, um, whichever be the case. Um, so this video is helpful, helpful for both people that are short stacking and for people that are facing short stackers. Um, so first of all, let's start with 3-betting. Um, I've got it set up for button versus big blind, which is a pretty common spot to be three betting a wider opening range. Um, and when I say wider, I mean wider than earlier positions. Uh, most people open their widest range from either the button or small blind, and a good majority of people actually open bigger from, or uh, more often from the button. Um, so the way I've got it set up here is um, what you can do is double click. Um, where it's right here. I guess I could back up and show you guys how to set this up from the beginning. Um, that might be better. So what I'll do is, is go File New and click No and click a new tree right here. Um, and once this pop-up comes up you pick the positions that you want involved in the pot and since it's going to be a heads up pot I'll do Button and Big Blind and it'll be a pre-flop analysis. So you click OK and it starts you off here. So you, first of all, you choose the button's raise size um, and the fact that he's raising it all. Um, you just double click raise and just type in. I'm just going to do a 3x raise. Uh, the games I'm playing right now, most people raise 3x from the button. Um, I won't get into the merits of your raise sizing there in this video, but um, Keep pay, pay attention to your raise sizing when you set this up because min raising versus 4xing it makes a huge difference in the profitability of various shoving ranges. So for this video, I'm pretty much going to stick to 3x just for brevity. Um, but yeah, just keep that in mind. And what you'll also need to do is give the two scenarios you're trying to create. And in this video he's never going to be folding I mean I'm sorry he's never going to be open folding so he's either raising um, or he's folding um, but it what this does is it allows the tree to process once you click calculate down here you have to have fold down here as well or it won't work properly um, and while we're not concerned with his fold as much as his opening hands um, it will show you the percentage of the hands he's opening versus folding once this calculates so we've got our raise size set up. Um, we've got um, the fold clicked here as well. The next thing we need to do is um, set up what the big blind is doing. And what you'll need to do is, before you can do any of this, you'll need to go down here to the bottom left and set up your stack sizes and the blind sizes. So we'll do the blinds first. Um, and this is pretty straightforward. Um, you set up your blinds 25 cents, 50 cents, whatever the right percentage is on the site. The standard is pretty much 5%, so you can just leave it at that if you like. Um, and most sites have a cap of $3 for any one hand. Um, and then you can input your rate back, back percentages, and that does figure in, but I like to keep it at zero. I, I like to figure out the profitability of my shoves before I start looking at rate back. Um, I, like my, I like to know what the profitability is at face value, um, but that's something you can fool with to see. Because considering a higher, if you have a higher rate back percentage on a site, um, you can definitely shove a wider range knowing you're going to get some of that money back. 
Um, and of course, you got this bottom. This is for like a poster, like if somebody posted a small or a, dead, or a dead big blind. You can have that to the pot right there. And once you get that set up, you want to store it as your default. That way, you don't have to every time you do a calculation go back in here. Um, so just click OK. And then, of course, you have to set up stack sizes. So, what I did is basically put all the stacks at 50 except my own. If you do multiple, um, like three way or four way pots, um, it will change your shoving ranges. But as long as the effective stack size is your stack size, um, that's all that matters. Um, the only way it would matter is if the button had $10 here versus uh, 50. As long as the stack size is greater, greater than yours, it's the effective stack size, and that's all that matters. So um, if you decide to do a calculation where you're the button versus, say, under the gun, um, you'll need to make sure you go in here and change the stack sizes. Um, but once you get it set up, for your current calculation, what you're working on, you can just store it as your default. Um, but getting back to the tree itself, um, and when I say tree, that's what they call this, is a um, calculation tree, I guess. Um, and the reason they call it a tree is because there's different branches here, which makes sense. Um, so now we're going to work on the big blind and his what he's going to be doing. And what we're working on is three bet ranges versus the button. So what we'll do is, is hover over raise here and you can see all in right here. And you just double click that and it automatically clicks the $15 all in. And then you of course have to click fold here. Um, and then once you, and of course figuring out your, your, your shoving range also depends on the calling range of your opponent. So you'll need to go in here and put in a calling as well. So what you do is go up here and hover over. Well, I basically just double click call and then fold as well. And um, that'll put that in there. So then what you need to do is start entering ranges. Um, let's say the button opens 25% of hands. So you would just put 25% in here. Or as close as you can get to it. Now you'll notice this pulls up what is probably not your average 25% range. So you will need to adjust this to whatever hand you believe your opponent is actually opening. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'm not going to do too much of that at this point, um, at least not initially. So he opens a 25% range for $1.50. Um, and let's say he calls um, with 7% um, hands. Um, something like, let's see if I can get it there. Um, something like this. Um, of course, you know he's not probably not calling Queen Jack as often. He's calling Queen Jack, Ace Jack off suit. So um, this is probably a pretty standard button calling range for your an average player out there. Probably they're going to be calling sevens though and sixes a lot in a button versus uh, big blind situation. And of course, this this can be way wider than this, or it can be narrower depending on the player. But let's just go with this standard, I guess, nine percent um, calling range for now. So we have our opening range, and we have our calling range set up for the button. Um, but for your range to shove with, um, you don't really need to put anything in here because you'll see in a minute why um, what's going to happen here is when I click calculate right here it's going to do the math for us okay so we see that he's opening 25 percent and he's calling um, 36 percent of the time and folding 64 percent of the time so we know our shove's going to work versus these ranges um, 65 almost 65 percent of the time but here's the cool thing about this program this is what you're going to love if you haven't used this before is if you go up here and hover over your hands it's going to show you the EV of every single hand possible. Uh, it'll show you which ones are profitable and it'll show you which ones are not profitable. As you can see, on average with aces, you're going to win $4.67 in this pot. Now that doesn't mean you're going to win $4.67 every time you get called because obviously you're winning you know, 80% of a $30 pot. And you're not winning 467, you're winning much more than that. What this is calculating is how much you're winning on average, whether he folds or not. So the times he calls, obviously, you're winning more than the times he folds. The times he folds, you're only winning his raise plus the blinds, um, which is whatever that is, 225. 
Um, so on average with aces, you're winning 467. You can look all the way down the chart to pocket fours. Actually, I don't know why it's not showing the entire thing. Um, well, sorry about that, guys. I guess it's it's cut off here the right side of the screen. And uh, without opening the screen wider, I don't know how to make the fit better. So I apologize. Um, but you can see that tens are winning a dollar seventy on average. Um, but hands like queen jack suited. Um, Ace-10 offsuit, they are basically breaking even or slight losers. Um, but there's one thing that you have to keep in mind when you're shoving from the big blind is you already have 50 cents invested. So if you fold, you are losing 50 cents. Um, so always keep that in mind that anything that loses less than 50 cents on this chart here in this situation is actually going to be more profitable than folding. So that makes queen six suited here profitable. It's four cents more profitable than folding. Um, and I sure hope that Card Runners EV has not already figured that calculation in and deducted the big blind because if they had, I feel pretty foolish. But I'm pretty sure they haven't. Um, so um, keep that in mind with your calculations. Um, if you want to err on the side of caution. Um, you could just think about the shoving ranges that actually show as profitable. Um, and that, for variance sake, that might be the best thing to do anyways. So you might just want to realize your shoving range here actually is fours plus, king ten suited plus, king queen offsuit, ace jack offsuit plus, and ace four suited plus. Um, okay, so now that we know that's the profitable shoving range, of course you're not going to be able to do these calculations on the fly while you're playing. Um, but you'll be able to start recognizing profitable shove spots just based on the percentage of hands that a player is opening and the amount of time he's folding. Um, and actually, the amount that a player folds is a much bigger indicator of whether a hand is profitable to shove or not. Um, and I'll show you why. Um, let's say this guy does not call with sixes and sevens. Um, and actually, he doesn't call with king from either. And uh, he's going to just call with Broadway aces, ace, except ace 10, and eights plus. And let's redo the calculation here. And now, let's look at what's profitable. Look at all the extra hands here that are profitable now. Just because he's now folding 73% of the time versus 64. Um, and actually, if you think about the blind invested, every single hand almost is profitable. So, against a player raising 25% of hands and folding 73% of the time, you can almost open 100% of hands. You can almost 3-bet 100% uh, against that type of player. Um, so, a rule of thumb that I have is that if a player is folding more than 75% to your button raises, you can just about shove any two cards at that point, um, no matter what his opening range is. So, let's say he... Um, Let's see if we can get to that number. Let's say you fold 78%. Well, here you are. You're profitably shoving just about every single hand. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's tighten his range up a little bit. Let's say he only opens... Let's say he's a super nit, only opens like... You're not going to ever get too much tighter than this. But let's say you open 15% of hands um, for the button, and he has that same tight calling range. Now, as you can see, that made a huge difference. Um, now you can only probably shove sixes plus and things queen. Um, so that's why against very nitty players, you want to um, pretty much wait till you have value hands before you're shoving against them. Because even if they have a super tight calling range, they're, um, it's still not that profitable to shove a wide range versus them. Um, but on the other hand, these players aren't going to be opening against your blinds that often. So they're going to be refunneling the money right back to you. In other words, when they fold, you're, you're keeping a certain percentage of the blinds that they could have been stealing from you. So it's not necessary to re-steal versus those people as much because um, you, you're keeping your blinds and you're not... There's no need to defend blinds that you're keeping anyways. Um, but as you can see, if this player um, was a super nit and only called ace... Um, Ace-King 
and Jax Plus versus Rusho. Because believe it or not, there actually are players like that out there. They are rare nowadays. Now he's folding 80% again, and you can once again show him two cards. So your biggest indicator, and you should definitely have this stat in your HUD. Um, it doesn't work that much on Bovada, obviously, because you only have session stats. But if you're playing on another site that lets you track long-term stats, and you see a player folding more than 75% of the time to three bets, and specifically to your three bets, um, that's why the versus hero stats on hold the manager are so great. If you get a long-term sample size on somebody and you know exactly what they're folding to your three bets, um, you can really exploit them if you know they fold. So if you see a player folding more than 75% of hands to three bets, um, you can go crazy um, on them with your wide shoving range, especially in squeeze situations. It's it's uh, even more profitable. Um, but also keep in mind that if a player is um, three betting 75% against the field, I'm I'm sorry, calling three bets 75% versus the field, they're probably only calling three bet. They're probably actually calling three bets more like 70 or less to use 65 to 70. So always fudge your numbers because obviously you're a short stack and you're going to get called more often um, when somebody three bets or when you three bet. So. Always just drop it 5%. That's usually a good rule of thumb. So you should be looking for somebody that folds more than 75% um, to base it on that 70% number and so on and so forth. Um, so let's get back. Let's do some more standard ranges here. Let's say somebody uh, opens 35%, which is a pretty standard opening range from a button. And let's change these around a little bit because these are not realistic ranges. In fact, I'm going to clear this and I'll just do the ranges myself. Um, button range, all pocket pairs, all broadways, um, many of the suited connectors, um, a lot of the one gappers, um, and the regular connectors, um, all the suited aces, and pretty much all aces anyways. And that pretty much gets you to 35% right there. Um, let me go ahead and take this one off to get, our, get us closer. Yeah, so we're right at 35% now. Um, and this is a more realistic opening range from the button that you'll see out there. And uh, now we will do his calling range. Um, a standard calling range um, is a lot of pocket pairs. People usually will call fives or better. And this is just speaking in general. Um, um, you also won't see them folding ace 10 or better very often. They'll pretty much call it ace 8 suited or better, king queen suited. Um, and I can discount King Jack a little bit, but people are still calling with that quite frequently. So you'll see about an 11.5%, 11% calling range um, out there. That's pretty common. Um, and then we'll do the calculation here. So as you can see, your average player is um, folding the three bets about 67% um, to your button shoves. Um, so what kind of range does that give us for shoving all in? Um, a lot of suited aces, um, a lot of suited kings, um, pretty much all your pocket pairs, and ace eight or better. Some of these hands are marginal, as you can see. So a good range to stick to for shoving against uh, an unknown button range is something like um, fours plus, ace ten plus, maybe ace eight suited plus, king queens, both your king jacks, queen jacks suited. Um, you can throw in a king 10 suited, queen 10 suited every once in a while if they have a higher than normal um, fold to 3 bet. Um, as this number here tightens up, um, you have to tighten your range up. And as this number here loosens, um, you can add more and more hands. And if this hits 75%, um, you can really start shoving wide against these guys. Until they adjust, of course. The, the trick is to shove more often without them realizing you're shoving more often and um, not just three bet every single time they open a button because they're going to adjust rapidly. But um, throwing in a light three bet every once in a while is fine against these guys. Um, there really is no rule of thumb to that. Um, just use your own game flow experience to do that. Okay, so now that you understand how to do three betting calculations, um, let's flip this around a little bit, and um, let's say that we're on the button. Um, now, my book talks about opening extremely right, wide range in late position, so um, I can just go ahead and do it. My usual opening range from late position, especially on the button, 
um, includes a lot of hands. Um, all kings, all queens, all jacks, um, anything suited and connected um, is a standard open for me. Um, any king, as I said, any queen. And I won't discuss the theory of why we open such a wide range of late position. I've got it's in my book. Um, no need to belabor it here. You can pick up my ebook for you know, seven ninety five on Amazon or on my website. So um, it's all in there, and it goes into great detail on this stuff. Um, so uh, my standard opening range from the button with against unknowns is about eighty eight percent. Um, and this will tighten up to as tight as 25% depending on who's behind me or to loosen up to 100% depending on who's behind me. Um, and you're going to see the beauty of opening such a wide range here in a second. Um, let's say your opponent's stand, well first of all let's do our calling range. Well actually we're going to change this to 100% because that's what we're trying to figure out is what is our accurate calling range if somebody shoves on us. Um, so let's say somebody shoves, um, pocket pairs, broadways, suited acer, aces, and a few other aces. Um, let's just do this. Um, this could be a pretty standard light three betting range right here, um, about 20%. Um, you'll see 15% a lot out there. You'll see 20%. You'll see as high as 25%. Let's just go ahead and do the 20% for now. Let's find a way to get it there. Something like this. And let's do the calculation. Now somebody shoves on us, or it's an effective shove for $15, um, which is 30 big blinds. We can profitably call it off um, with, looks like about sixes plus, um, ace nine suited plus, ace ten off suit, king queen suited. Um, so it's a fairly tight range, even though we know he's three betting light. Um, but so that's, I mean, uh, let's go ahead and just do a tight three betting range for the heck of it. Let's do our typical knit three betting range versus our opens. Okay. Something like ace jack plus, you know, eights plus. It's like your typical 7% three betting range, which you'll see out there. Um, now, you can only call with tens plus or ace king. So if you're getting three bet um, against guys with less than 10%, you you just pretty much want to stick to your standard um, calling ranges out there. Um, tens plus ace king. If they're above 10%, maybe add ace queen in, eights, nines. Um, it's not until you get to the 15% or higher range that you're getting three bet that you want to start expanding to um, either doing some light four betting or calling off a little lighter. It's just not worth it. And here's why, I'm going to show you why here. If somebody's only three betting 7% against you, if they're not adjusting to your wide stealing range, um, look at this. This is how much you're making every time you raise with each hand um, if somebody has a tighter range like this. In other words, you can open 100% of hands and even with three deuce offsuit, you're making 11 cents at 50 and L every time you raise for the button there against this player when it folds, when the small blank folds. Um, so you can see the the, the reason we show, we uh, open such a wide range of my position against nits. Um, so let's uh, switch this around. Let's say we're three bet. Let's, let's put a light three betting range in here and see what happens. And this is pretty standard for what you'll see for guys that are um, Three betting light against you. They want to three bet hands it if they get called. Play very well. Um, so you'll see something like this: 28, 29 percent. Some guys are crazy and even go any two cards, or they really know what they're doing and they know you're opening 87 percent. They realize they can do any two cards, and that's when you have to start adjusting. Um, so let's say somebody's doing 29 percent, and just briefly, let's. Um, I'll just cover. Um, well, if you see somebody three betting light, um, and you believe they're three betting light, 
and you have a label on them for that, or you just decide in your head that you, they're probably three bending light. What you can do is, is if you are on a site that tracks long-term stats, if they're three bedding against a button open, say 15%, and you're pretty sure they're a regular, you can pretty much add five to 10% to that. So when you do your calculations, if somebody's opening fifth, or three bedding 15% versus the field, you can just automatically just understand they're gonna be three bedding at least 20% versus you. So always remember to fudge your numbers based on your extreme tendencies, which are your opening a wide range and your three betting a wide range. Um, so yeah, so let's say he's three betting that range, and now we can call with a lot of suited aces, a lot of off suit aces, eights. We can even call with king jack suited. Um, now I'm not doing like four betting in this, but if he was to do a small three bet there, we could even we could four bet a much wider range. Um, and let's say we have the, the extremely good regular that knows he can three bet wide versus you um, because he knows you're opening 87%. You'll see ranges like this. A lot of suited kings. Um, you'll see guys doing this 43, 45, 50% pretty consistently. If you know a guy's doing that, um, at least until he readjusts, you can, you can start calling off pretty light against these guys. Um, pretty much any Broadway can call versus somebody that's super three betting light versus you. Now you're not going to see these type of ranges in normal games as much as you will in cap games. Um, but if you're playing 20 big blind cap games or 30 big blind cap games, you're you're going to see guys with ranges that wide. So you need to you need to understand what you can be calling with. Um, so that's that's I think that's a pretty good. I think I've got you guys started pretty good here. I don't think I need to belabor the point here. You could go on forever. There's endless amounts of calculations you can do. But if I were you and you're trying to learn more about three bedding, four bedding, opening ranges, what ranges should be four bedding against other ranges and three bedding against other range, certain ranges, you should spend some time with this. Um, I would recommend spending a few hours a week until you really get it down. Put in the standard ranges you're seeing out there, like your your standard cutoff range of 20-25%, your standard butt range of 35%, your extremely loose guys, put in the 75% if you see somebody doing that, and then put in your knit ranges and see what you can 3-bet versus those ranges. And then just kind of come up with your own standard ranges. Um, and actually in my book I do provide you with um, a very solid standard range based on my own experience on what you're going to see out there. So if you want to get my book and just use my standard ranges, um, you can do that for now. But I recommend not just using my ranges blindly. Um, put those ranges of my book into this calculation here, and you can see where I was coming from um, when I came up with them. Um, spend some time with this, and pretty soon, before you know it, um, a few thousand hands will go by. You'll get some experience, and you'll be able to almost instantly recognize a profitable spot. And once you start adding more and more profitable spots to your game, of course, your EV is going to increase and your win rate is going to increase. Um, and even though most of your money isn't coming from 3-betting, um, it is coming from stealing wide. So you need to understand how profitable it is to open wide against um, people that don't 3-bet wide. Um, and you can learn that from looking at this. You can find out exactly what you're making per hand um, as you raise. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I hope you guys have... Um, enjoyed the video. I know it's, if you made it this far, um, I know this is some technical stuff. This is definitely some nerdy stuff. Um, but if you want to win at poker and you want to become one of the best, um, you have to do this stuff nowadays um, or else you're going to get left in the dust. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below or email me at jim at automaticpoker.com. Come join the forum. Let's get some discussions going on this stuff. Um, you can see the links to all of this stuff in the in the in the uh, uh, above in the section in the section above um, but go ahead and subscribe you'll get my notifications of my future videos um, and if you have any videos you want to see email me or leave a comment below and I'll be happy to get that done for you um, but thanks for watching and you guys have a good day